Hello everyone, this is DA from E Academy and now we will start the fourth step of the direct method that is assembly. Uh, what is meant by assembly? In which we are going to assemble the element equation to obtain the overall equilibrium equation. So far we have seen a bar of length L and we know in the first step of the discretization of the structure that in which we have to divide uh, the element into sub elements so here the whole element whole structure whole bar with the length l and if we have to divide uh, this for example for the first step we have to divide this whole element into two elements which means that we have one element and two element and we know uh, we represent elements with the with capital n and here we are with three nodes number of nodes is represented by small n so we have n is equal to 2 small n is equal to 3 and capital n is equal to 2 and in the last step we have derived the stiffness matrix of an element and that is represented by k and that is equal to so this is the stiffness matrix of an element and e is here for the representation of the element because it is only for an element uh, that is linear and having two nodes so here we are with the two elements here so this is for each of the element and we know when we are in the assembly so we have to gather all of the information together in order to to get the whole idea of the structure so here we have to write the stiffness matrix of whole of of this structure that have two elements in it so we will use the main definition and we will write the stiffness matrix and the force or load vector and um, the displacement vector as well of this whole structure because in assembly we have to write all of these three things so we know we have three nodes which means that we have three nodal displacements so here it would be the elements of the vector of the nodal displacement vector so let's write the matrix of the whole geometry so let's start uh, for the first element we have this e is equal to one so let's write the values here a e by l and e is equal to one for the first element and minus a e by l and again a is uh, e is one because of the first element and same here as well as at this point so now the important thing is to write the value when the two nodes are connecting with each other so here the node 2 of the element 1 is exactly same as the node 1 of element 2 so here the nodal loads would add up so this is the point so this is the point where we have to add the load of it that is a e by l and here e, and here e is 2 so this is 2 and for this we have minus a e by l and e is 2 because we are writing it for the second element and now here we are with minus a e by l and we have a e by l now there are two places where we have no value so here we have to put zero because this is the point this is the point where two nodes of two individual elements combine or having the same displacement value so that's why we have to add up the load here and the two points uh, there is zero because there is no load 
why because if uh, here this is this is the k for all of the structure and here we have to write the nodal displacement value so here it would be u1 u2 and u3 as we have discussed in the previous step that this is uh, the nodal displacement vector so what is this representing here is that this is the nodal value at at u1 and this is a nodal value at u2 and this is at u3 because we have derived the stiffness matrix this stiffness matrix on the local level and in the local level when we have the linear elements there is no three nodes there are no there there are only two nodes in the in the linear model we have only two nodes we don't have three nodes that's why we have to put zero here because if we have three nodes then the model would not be the element would not be linear so it would be in the quadratic so the definition would change for things so that's why and here the zero on this side is also with the same reason because we have an element um, that is linear so that's why we have to put zero in order to justify our our assumption of the linear elements so this is the stiffness matrix for the whole structure this is the nodal displacement vector of the whole structure so here we have to write the total load for the whole structure and this is f1 f2 and f3 so here we are with the total assembly of the elements uh, total assembly of the matrices total assembly of the vectors and all the things that we have derived on the element level here we have combined them in order to get the whole idea so now moving toward the fifth step of uh, the direct method uh, the fifth step of the direct method is finding the solution if we have uh, boundary conditions or we have available conditions that we have to plug in in order to find the value of the desired variable so um, we have seen in the assembly that in the in the assembly process we will get the whole matrix we will get the whole system in which we have we have to plug in values plug in those values that are available and to find the remaining values so uh, let's write the matrix here again so for example uh, the boundary condition is that the bar is fixed from both ends and yeah we have to find the displacement from the middle of it this is u2 so this is u1 and this is u3 so if the bar is fixed and this is the boundary condition uh, then u1 is 0 and u3 is 0 so we have to find the value of u2 because if it is uh, the boundary condition then initially we will have the values of area and the constant and of the length and uh, there will be a relation between some of the forces maybe some of the force values uh, is available uh, in the initial condition but it would be that we can figure out the values of some some of the values of the forces for example f3 and f1 have a relation that they are in opposite to each other and there is no load at u2 so that would be zero and, and and that would be there would be other cases when when f1 f2 f3 may be given maybe we have uh, to find the values of all of them and so on so the boundary condition why it is important uh, because if we have to solve a system then the boundary condition should be there in order to figure out the values of the desired variable and the last step is of the post processing what is meant by the post processing is that we have to figure out for example we have to figure out the stress or strain of the of the element level of the bar of the element here we are dealing with the bar so that's why i'm saying the bar but it can be anything so in order to figure out what would be the element level for example strain what would be the element level stresses value or it could be anything so why we are saying we have to find the values of these things in the post processing as the name that when we have applied the boundary conditions um, and the model has been solved then the model is investigated for example by results 
um, this, this is the post processing is all about so for example for example we only saying that we have to figure out in the post processing process that find the strain of each element so we know by definition that strain is equal to change in displacement by per unit length um, and it would be u2 minus u1 by the way it would be also on the element level uh, so the so of by plugging in the values we can figure out the element level strain and we can also see from a different angle that by definition we can also write the change in displacement by du by dx because the displacement is depending upon the values of x so and we know uh, in the from the second step that what is element level equation um, it, it is u1 plus u2 minus u1 by l times x so if we're putting e because we have to figure out this train of the element level so yeah if we if we have to find the derivative uh, we know that the derivative of constant is zero so it would be zero and x and this whole thing is a constant so the derivative would be this thing so from both of the angles we can figure out uh, the value of the element level strain so it could be anything that is in the given question. Maybe it would be strain of element level. So this is the way we can figure out um, the values in order to analyze the model in the post-processing process. So these are all the six methods that we have discussed uh, of the direct method. And in the next video, we will be solving an example. Eventually, we will be doing the stress analysis of a bar. So it would be more helpful in understanding all of these six steps in the next example. So this is for now. We're looking for most of the videos and you can subscribe to this channel you know, to watch more upcoming videos. We will meet you in the next video. Till then, take care. Goodbye.